So the absolute mad lads at uh, Marvel have just unveiled their Phase 4 lineup. And uh, yeah, it all, it all seems very interesting, very intriguing. And uh, this video, I'm just going to kind of go through uh, in chronological order what they talked about. Now, I haven't seen the actual panel, so um, I can only go by what I've read. Um, <laughs> So yeah, well we're just we're just gonna uh, we're we're just gonna go through, and I'm just gonna give my thoughts about each announcement and what it could mean for the MCU and whatever the fuck. So uh, yeah, if you want a com completely un uninformed breakdown of <laughs> of all these movies, then you've come to the right place. All right, so I guess they they started off the panel by talking about Black Widow. Now I'm not entirely certain where this takes place because I mean it kind of can't take place after Endgame if you uh if you know what happens to uh to Miss Romanov in that movie so I'm not entirely certain where this takes place in the MCU I don't know if it does cuz I know there were rumors about it taking place um after uh like after Infinity War during like the snap the snapping, whatever they call it. Um, I'm not sure if it takes place during that time frame, but uh, yeah, we'll we'll see. Uh, they showed like uh, I don't know if it was a trailer or if it was just a scene, but apparently this movie um, it's kind of going back to the Winter Soldier feel, uh, you know, feeling a bit more serious, and apparently the action that they showed uh, looked really incredible. So hey, if we're going back to some Winter Soldier esque MCU, then I'm all about that because the Winter Soldier is obviously one of the most one of the better MCU movies. So uh, if we're gonna get anything like that again, then hell yeah, uh, I'm all for that. And uh, speaking of the Winter Soldier, next they talked about Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So very interesting thing about this movie is that, uh, <laughs> or I mean, not movie because it's not a movie, but very interesting about this is that this is uh, one of the Disney Plus shows. And so here's the thing, they, they're they kind of just announcing um, or unveiling these Disney Plus shows right along with the movies, so that kind of leads me to believe that, you know, yeah, these Disney Plus shows are, I guess they're being seen as, you know, pillars in the MCU right along with the movies, which is very interesting because obviously <laughs> up until now, the uh the you know the the marvel shows you know they've yes they've been in the mcu but they've never crossed over or intersected at all like i don't know fucking agents of shield dude isn't ever you're, you're never gonna see his bitch ass in a in, in a marvel movie i mean obviously colson was in in the mcu but um so like we've seen things from the movies referenced in the TV shows, but we've never seen anything created in the TV show appear in a movie. Wait, actually, except for um the fucking uh, dude Jarvis from the guy who plays him in uh, in Agent Carter was in Endgame, so we have seen that. But um, but no, but uh, but actually more than that, it it seems like like yeah, these shows are going to be like. You know, not only canon, but they are going to fundamentally, um, they're going to fundamentally change things that will be addressed in the movies. So, yeah, this is, uh, this is all very interesting and very exciting. Um, but uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, obviously, um, Falcon, who is now the new Captain America, uh, if you saw in the game. Then, uh, you know, Captain America kind of passed off the mantle to... Uh, to Falcon, so I guess we're gonna see him probably struggle with living up to uh, to to Steve, and uh, and the Winter Soldier. So yeah, I really enjoyed uh, uh, what's his face, Anthony Mackie, and uh, the guy who plays the Winter Soldier. I uh, I very much enjoy their chemistry, and uh, I'll be very interested to see what what they do with this. And uh, oh yeah, uh, Daniel Bru Bruhal Bru. Bruhal, Bru uh, the guy who played Baron Zemo, he's back uh, as as Zemo, and I also th I think they showed some footage of this, and apparently you see him put on the uh, the Zemo mask, which uh, is cool. Um, 
yeah, I, I think it's cool that uh, they're bringing this guy back and he's actually going to be Zemo like he is in the comics. And uh, yeah, I'm very interested to see these uh, these Disney Plus shows. I hope they're good. I hope they don't fall flat on their faces. Um, you know, they're they're I, I know that they're getting like a massive. They're, like the budgets of these shows are going to be way way bigger than uh, than what you'd see on a uh, on like a Marvel show, like a like an Agents of Shield or an Agent Carter. Uh, and even the Marvel Netflix shows, although as we've seen evidenced by Daredevil, uh, budget is not everything because, you know, Daredevil is honestly, honestly, I think Daredevil is probably my favorite property that the MC that the MCU has ever produced. Uh, and, it, you know, obviously they made that show for fucking lunch money, but uh, in, in Hollywood standards, I mean, but uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what the Falcon and the Winter Soldier brings us. I'm, I'm intrigued. And uh, next they talk. Oh, yeah. And uh, they, they just said fall 2020 that this uh, show is coming out. They didn't give a specific uh, release date. And, uh, okay, so The Eternals uh, set to release on November 6, 2020. Um, the Eternals, uh, I mean, it, it has a pretty crazy cast, right? Uh, you got Richard Madden, Kumail Nanjiani, Nanjiani, no, Nanjiani, sorry. Uh, I swear, I'm... <laughs> I'm just I'm just bad at reading names. I'm not trying to make fun of anybody here. Uh, Lauren Riddleoff. Uh, I was kind of making fun of Daniel Bruhal. Br <laughs> uh, okay, Lauren Riddleoff, Brian Terry, uh, Brian Terry Henry, Salma Hayek, Liam McHugh, Don Lee, Angelina Jolie, Chloe Zhao. Oh yeah, actually going back to Black Widow. Uh, David Harbour is in it, and I think he's playing Taskmaster. I don't know if that was confirmed, but I. I heard a lot about him playing Taskmaster, so it's fucking dope as hell. Um, uh, sorry, but going back, uh, yeah. So yeah, the Eternals, uh, pretty stacked cast, I have to say. Um, so uh, I don't, I know next to nothing. Oh yeah, and also I, I guess they also uh, confirmed that Millie Bobby Brown will not be in this. I thought it was confirmed. I don't know because I just saw it on Twitter that Millie Bobby Brown was gonna be in the Eternals, but. I guess not. I guess that was just a rumor. So, uh, that's disappointing. But, uh, either way, the Eternals, I don't know anything about the Eternals. Uh, I guess they're like, are they like space gods? I, I, I honestly have no idea. But, I mean, hey, more, more MCU space stuff. I'm, I'm down, I guess. Uh, yeah, could, could be good. Well, I, I hope it's great. Um, obviously it's a stacked cast. Uh, yeah. I assume it's gonna, ex, you know, expand uh, the space uh, aspect of the MCU even more than Guardians of the Galaxy has done. And uh, I also, I assume it's not gonna be, you know, uh, it's not just gonna be like, like I assume it's gonna be probably gonna be a bit more serious than the Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, it'll probably still have humor, but I, I assume it'll be more serious than the Guardians of the Galaxy. And I hope it has more of an identity than, uh, than, than, you know, something like Captain Marvel, because I feel like Captain Marvel, a lot of it just kind of felt like it was aping a bunch of stuff from, uh, from Guardians of the Galaxy, but not doing any of it nearly as well, you know, with a lot, with the 80s nostalgia, no, Captain Marvel was 90s, but, you know, you know, a lot of the nostalgia, and, you know, oh, let's play, uh, let's play an old song in the scene. I assume there isn't gonna be as much of that here, um, yeah, I, just, I hope it just does its own thing and doesn't try to copy Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, that's really all I... It's really the only expectation I... Or hope, I guess, that I'll be going into the Eternals with because I know nothing about it. Uh, yeah, so next they talked about Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Um, so, fuck yeah. Um, so this is going to be coming out February 12th, 2021. And, uh, yeah, so Shang-Chi, it's gonna be played by this guy named Simu Liu. Now, apparently this guy was only cast, like, a few days ago. Like, I, I, apparently he was screen tested, and they casted him. Like, uh, this all happened a few days ago, which is kind of insane. <laughs> um, but yeah, he, he came out, and people that were at, uh, at Hall H, apparently they adore the guy. Apparently he's just really charming. And, okay, cool. Um, Shang-Chi is another Marvel property that I know next to nothing about. But uh, what is interesting about this is that 
A, it's going to be uh, the first uh, Asian lead in, uh, I think, in a superhero film in general, but definitely in Marvel, in the MCU, and even a Marvel movie in general. I'm trying to think. I don't think we've ever had an Asian superhero lead. So, even in, like, TV or anything like that. So, yeah, that's, that's fucking dope as hell. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, and also, this film, uh, this film is going to feature the actual Mandarin. So, if you'll remember, uh, in Iron Man 3, Ben Kingsley played, like, a fake Mandarin because uh, Aldrich Killian, who was the villain in that movie, he, uh, he, like, hired Ben Kingsley's character to be an actor and portray the Mandarin and I personally like that twist, although I, I really don't want to talk about that <laughs> uh, fucking uh, like six years <laughs> after Iron Man 3. But uh, yeah, uh, this uh, movie is going to feature the actual Mandarin. So all you motherfuckers that were pissed off that they, they didn't have the actual Mandarin, you just had to be a little, a little patient, you know? They, they, they're getting around to it now. And uh, yeah. I, I mean, again, it's just the the world building that the MCU does is so cool that, uh, you know, they can do that and then, you know, kind of let people, like, have people be aware of the Mandarin in a way and then have it all, you know, then have it be able to bring back, you know, bring back the whole Mandarin thing six years later and, you know, just have it all work together. It's, the MCU is just... Really cool. Really, really, really cool what they're doing. Uh, I guess they 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 really need my props uh, to to make to to make them feel validated. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, uh, yeah. I guess uh, yeah, Shang Chi. Um, yeah, it's just gonna be uh, be interesting, interesting film, and uh, I'm excited for it. Um, all right, and uh, in spring 2021, we are going to get WandaVision, which is a Disney Plus show. And uh, all right, so this show is very interesting because obviously, uh, I guess it's going to it's going to show us how or yeah, I'm not sure if a movie before this is going to show how Vision is resurrected. And but um but yeah, uh, or I don't know if they're going to do that in this show. Uh, we'll see. But, uh, yeah, also interesting about this is that it's going to introduce a grown-up version of Monica Rambeau, who was the little girl in Captain Marvel. So, uh, that's cool. And, uh, yeah. Um, I, I, I guess there was, like, a comic, uh, a comic run where Wanda and Vision, I, I think, I think in that comic Vision, they actually went back to the 1950s. And they set up like a, and it, it was just a, re, you know, kind of, kind of a goofy little, uh, little comic run where Vision and Wanda were trying to raise a family or whatever. And, uh, I guess, I, I, I don't know if this is going to go back to the 1950s. Probably not, although they could, because time travel is now a thing. I, I don't know if they're just like, fuck the, fuck the, the, the present. Let's, let's go back to the past. I, I don't know. I don't know what they're, they're going to do with this, but, um. Or, I'm an idiot, uh, how are they going to go back to the 50s it's, if it's going to have a grown-up version of, of of the little girl from Captain Marvel? Never mind, most likely it's just going to be in the present. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, this could be interesting. Um, I, will, I will say, uh, with a lot of this, um, you know, we'll get to uh, to another character later, or next actually. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll make the point that I was going to make after I'm done talking about Loki. Uh, Loki is a new Disney Plus show coming out in spring 2021. Uh, also around the same time is uh, is going to be Loki. Uh, so, obviously, uh, Tom Hiddleston is going to be back reprising his role. And so, I guess this show is going to be um, is going to be following the Loki who, if, if you remember in, uh, in Endgame, when... Uh, they went back to the Battle of New York, and they did a bunch of shenanigans there, and Loki, at that point in time, stole the, uh, uh fuck, what's it called? Uh, the Space Stone, I think. Is it the Space Stone? I, I think? Or the, they, they called it the Tesseract? I don't know, he stole it, and he kind of just 
teleported off somewhere, and it was never addressed again, and this Disney Plus show is going to address, I guess, what happened to him after that. So, it's very confusing, because I don't know if that Loki is the same Loki that died in Infinity War. I, I'm not sure, like, I don't know if if when that happened, when Loki stole that Tesseract, if that created another dimension or another timeline i don't know <laughs> um but uh either way but yeah i guess what the, the point that i was gonna make with the vision is that i don't know it's like they're you know the loki and the vision's death deaths were pretty impactful in an in infinity war and i'm not sure how i feel about them bringing them back but I guess if this Loki show is going back, is, I guess, in the past, or in another dimension, I guess the Loki's, Loki's death in Infinity War still counts, but, I don't know, it's kind of like, I, I don't know, I kind of would have rather have seen, seen, uh, seen Tom Hiddleston kind of hang up the mantle of Loki, uh, just leave that lasting, you know, leave the lasting impact of the character be that moment in, Inf in Infinity War, but, uh, I don't know. And, uh, you know, Vision as well, but... No, I, I guess I'm, I'm more okay with Vision, because I actually do... I feel like there is actually a lot more that you can do with that character. Uh, so, but yeah, uh, we'll see. And Loki... I mean, obviously, if these shows are great, then I'm not gonna really care that much, but that's just kind of my gut feeling about all this. But, uh, next, they talked about Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. That's gonna be coming out on May 7th. 2021 and uh yeah so apparently this movie is also going to feature a uh, scarlet witch um uh and she's going to play a major role in it so and also like apparently things that happen in wandavision are gonna like directly affect this movie so again like what i was saying before that's actually it's actually a pretty big development that these shows are going to significantly you know intersect and affect what happens in the movies and uh and yeah i mean just them announcing them all announcing the shows right along with the movies it's, it's a pretty big statement but uh yeah dr strange in the multiverse of madness so uh just giving this title is they're actually going to be exploring the multiverse in this movie um uh, i guess i'm gonna be talking about far from home for uh for, for a minute here, so, uh, if, uh, if you have not seen it yet, uh, I guess skip ahead, skip ahead, uh, skip ahead, uh, uh, like, 30 seconds or, or something, I don't know, but, uh, I'll, I don't know, I might put, like, a timestamp or something, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, if you watched Far From Home, I'm gonna talk about it now, so if you have not seen it, get the fuck out of here, um, yeah, Far From Home, uh, they kind of, you know, in the trailer, they te in the trailers they teased that they were going to be introducing the multiverse in that movie, but they, you know, obviously the twist was that Mysterio uh, was just faking everything, and there, there, oh, he he wasn't from the multiverse at all. But uh, pretty pretty cool that I guess they're the you know they there is actually a multiverse, and they will be exploring it in Doctor Strange, and also I guess they mentioned that this. Uh, this Doctor Strange movie is going to have a support elements to it. I I wouldn't expect there to be a uh, I wouldn't expect it to be a full on horror movie. Um, I think that'd be cool, but but I wouldn't expect that. But I, I guess there will be um, some horror vibes going on with this movie. Um, so yeah, that's pretty interesting. Scott Derrickson, what did he direct? Hold on, let me let me just look this up real quick because i know he he had he is a horror director um hold on a second i'm just looking this up should probably edit this out but i'm not going to um oh yeah he directed sinister i haven't seen Sin sinister yet but uh apparently it's a pretty fantastic horror movie and uh yeah i guess they're letting him uh flex his horror muscles with this new uh doctor strange movie so yeah, okay, well, it sounds cool. I like the fact that uh, Scarlet Witch is going to be in this. Um, they didn't mention if Vision is going to be in it. Uh, that'd be kind of weird, but that would also be kind of cool if they, uh, you know, fucking Vision came in with them, came with them to, uh, you know, having Vision be uh, 
playing, you know, uh, playing around and interacting with all the magic shit. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, sounds cool, but uh, they even though they're going to be horror elements, uh, I think Kevin Feige did confirm that it, it, it isn't going to be rated R or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, sounds cool. And uh, next they talked about their uh, What If series that is going to be on Disney+. Plus. So, uh, I don't... So I this isn't gonna be I don't I don't think uh, I don't think that this uh, this series is gonna be canon or anything because uh, there this is gonna be an animated show that's basically just gonna be like I guess each episode is just gonna be a different story of like what if this happened you know like what if Spider Man uh, uh was uh what if Spider Man was I don't know, was an actual spider or some shit like that. I don't know. Um, just weird, like, like weird, just really weird storylines, I guess, that, you know, they, they want to play around with, but don't, don't want it to, like, actually affect the, uh, the MCU. So, I don't know, I don't know about the show. Like, like, okay, well, we'll see, we'll see what it is. I, I do like the idea that they're, I guess they're going to be giving, uh, giving directors to, uh, you know, just an opportunity to just tell whatever story they want with the MCU and not have their hands tied to the canon of the MCU. So that's pretty cool. And, uh, but I mean, it is, it is also, you know, more official because a lot of the MCU actors will be, uh, uh, doing the voice act, the, the voice acting for this, for the show. So, and, uh, and yeah, so it's not it like, I guess they're trying to, they're, they're trying to make it be like this, like, this not be like some throwaway thing you know kind of like an ultimate spider-man show or something like that like i guess they're trying to make this be more official uh but uh yeah we'll see we'll see could, could be fun could be fun um yeah so next they talked about hawkeye which is another disney plus show and uh, jerry renner is going to be back as hawkeye and um the series is also going to introduce kate bishop so Apparently, uh, there's a really popular Hawkeye run of the comics where, where like Hawkeye is like living in an apartment or some shit, and uh, and you know it's a comic run that people always talk about. I I'd like to get to it someday, and uh, I don't know if Kate Bishop is introduced in that run, but I know that Kate Bishop is a uh, she's kind of like a, a a protege of Hawkeye, and uh, I guess. Uh, I, I, I think that this show is probably going to set her up to be the, the new Hawkeye going forward in the Avengers. Um, yeah, so I don't know if this show is going to kind of be a send-off to Jeremy Renner's Hawkeye, but uh, we'll just have to see. Yeah, could, this could be fun. Um, I think uh, Jeremy Renner has really uh, grown into the Hawkeye character really well uh, over you know, over the course of the MCU, you know, he was kind of a, he was kind of a, you know, the butt of a lot of jokes when he first started, but he's really, you know, that, that character has really turned into one of my favorites, to be honest, so I'm all, I'm all in on a Hawkeye show. Uh, next they talked about Thor Love and Thunder, so Thor 4 is official, um, it's gonna be coming out November 5th, 2021, and Taika, uh, Taika Waititi is gonna return to direct but uh, also, who's going to return is Natalie Portman. Uh, Jane Foster is going to be returning. And she's going to be joining Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson. And I guess not only is Natalie Portman going to reprise her role, but she's going to become the new Thor in the MCU. So, I guess when you see... Um, you see at the end of Endgame that Thor is kind of realizing that he's not... Like, he doesn't really want to be king of Asgard. And, uh, we saw that he... We saw that he left with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, or with, I guess, with the Guardians. Um, and so, this is actually very interesting. So, it kind of looks like, I guess, um... Thor is going to be a Guardian. And it looks like Jane Foster is going to be the Thor... Uh, that uh, that I guess is gonna be in whatever future Avengers movie they might have planned, and uh, yeah, that's very very interesting. Um, 
So I don't think that Chris Hemsworth is done as is going to be done as Thor, but I think that he's just not going to be in the Thor movies and he's not going to be in the Avengers movies. He's going to be more in the Guardians. So yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Um, I I, I wonder because I I know that there was a a comic run of Thor uh, with Jane Foster where she um, and I read I read some of this, and uh, where Jane Foster she she was basically Thor um, but. She actually had cancer, so, like, every time that she, um, that she wielded Mjolnir and she, she was Thor, she was actually killing herself because it would, like, burn her chemotherapy. And, uh, that's a pretty powerful, powerful run. I don't know if they're gonna do that here. I mean, that, that'd be pretty powerful if they did that at some point, but either way, in, uh, Thor Love and Thunder, uh, Natalie Portman is returning, and, uh, yeah, this is... Uh, I'm very excited for this. Uh, I, I, I like, um, I, I liked uh, Thor, Thor Ragnarok. I, I thought it it leaned a bit too heavily on the comedic side, but um, it was still really fun. Um, you know, uh, this is probably also gonna lean heavily on the comedic side, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, yeah. So next, they talked about Blade. So. I think, like, I guess they didn't really give a date or anything for this or for this one, or even, like, a, a, a window, a release window. But, uh, they announced that, yes, Blade is coming, and it is not Wesley Slipes, but motherfucking Mahershala Ali. I did not mess up that name, I don't think. But, um, yeah, Mahershala Ali is gonna be Blade, so that's, that's pretty huge. Mahershala Ali, he's a pretty fantastic actor, you might know him, uh, he was, uh, caught in mouth in Luke Cage Season 1. Um, I don't know, this is kinda like, <laughs> just further separating, uh, the, the Marvel Netflix shows from the MCU, so, it's kind of a bummer from that, from that perspective, but, um, but, you know, it's, it's fine, the, the shows are... No, no longer a thing. So, you know, I guess, uh, I guess, I guess Marvel is just gonna be like, oh, those, those never really happened, you know. Um, I don't know, but uh, you know, Mahershala Ali, he's Blade. That, that's pretty fantastic. Um, we have no idea what the what this movie's gonna entail of. You know, there, I, I don't think there were like any details released in uh, about this. But uh, and yeah, so next up, so those are all the like. The official announcements that uh, that they made a big deal about, uh, because I'll just read you this quote that I guess uh, Kevin Feige uh, said. I guess near the end of the panel, he said, "We didn't even mention that we're making Black Panther two, and we didn't mention that Guardians of the Galaxy three is coming. Uh, we didn't even have time to talk about Captain Marvel two, by the way. I didn't even have time to talk about the Fantastic Four, and there's no time left to talk about mutants." So that's that's that okay. So there's just stuff to get to here. <laughs> um, so obviously Black Panther two, we knew that was coming. Um, uh, although I don't know if um, I, I guess Black Panther two, we knew Guardians of the Galaxy three was coming, and we knew Captain Marvel two was gonna, was a thing. Like we knew they were gonna make it. But uh, yeah, so uh, Marvel already had February eighth, twenty twenty two. They already had May 6, 2022, and July 29th, 2022, so I guess we can assume that uh, that these three movies are probably going to be on those dates. Um, yeah, because uh, they, they didn't say anything about those dates, but they are they had already confirmed that those date that movies were going to be uh, released on those dates, so we can probably assume that Black Panther 2, Guardians of, of the Galaxy 3... And Captain Marvel 2, they're, they're probably going to be those dates, but we don't really know what movie is going to be released when. But, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, uh... It's a thing that uh, we can assume. But, uh... He also name-dropped the Fantastic Four, and he talked about mutants. So, um... I don't think that we're going to get to the Fantastic Four or the X-Men until... Probably, probably pretty, pretty late in, in the future. Um... I just think that uh, you know Kevin Feige he already had his plan for what the for what the, for for what he wanted to do with the MCU, and uh, obviously X Men and Fantastic Four were not really a part of those plans. Um, so I I don't think we're gonna get them until I don't think we're gonna get them for a while to say the least. 
And I mean, Fantastic Four shouldn't be should be easy enough to introduce into the MCU, but the real problem arises with the mutants. Obviously, I mean, this this topic renders its uh, honestly could be its own video, but obviously the glaring issue is that you know traditionally with the X Men is like the mutants are like a thing for that have been a thing since you know the fucking beginning of humanity you know <laughs> so so i mean like to just say that oh yeah mutants have been here the entire time is going to be a bit weird and it's also going to be a bit weird if they like you know like mute like the what is it like the x gene i think is it the x gene that that, that gives people that makes someone a mutant i don't fucking know uh, like, to just say that, like, mutants, uh, the mutant gene, like, it just, like, develops now, uh, in the modern day, so, I don't know, like, this is a whole, honestly, this is a video in and of itself, but, you know, we'll see how they introduce the mutants in the, uh, in the MCU, it's good, so it's, it's gonna be very interesting to see how they do it, um, but, uh, yeah, they didn't talk, I mean, when, I mean, when they talked about, uh, mutants, obviously, they didn't say anything specific about Deadpool, uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see what they do with Deadpool. Um, I don't know if, uh, cause I think, I, I feel like they confirmed that Ryan Reynolds would be back with Deadpool 3, like, I think they were, they're gonna make a Deadpool 3, but I don't know if they're gonna tie that into the MCU or not. I mean, I feel like Deadpool is a character that you can kind of just, yeah, just put him in the MCU, make a joke about, about the Fox, uh, about Disney buying Fox. You know, I, I feel like you can introduce Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool into the MCU. Um, they were also, I, I, I'm trying to, I, I'm not sure, but I feel like they also confirmed that there isn't going to be an Avengers movie in phase four. So yeah, I, I think from what I'm reading here, it looks like phase four is going to end in, uh, phase four is going to end in, in 2022. So I think they basically confirmed that. You know, I mean, obviously they didn't talk about an Avengers movie throughout this time frame, but I think that they kind of confirmed that. I like, I don't know if they 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 like they said it or if people are just inferring that there's not going to be an Avengers movie in Phase Four because they didn't talk about one. But yeah, it looks like there isn't going to be an Avengers movie in Phase Four, which I'm kind of okay with because I mean, we just got the fucking the god of all Avengers movies, uh, in Endgame, you know, like, there's no way they're gonna top that, so, uh, or, I mean, at least in scope, um, and I would, I, I wouldn't want them to, um, you know, at least this soon, uh, especially with characters that we, we don't even know yet, we're not nearly, we're not, we're not, you know, with characters that we're not as attached to, so, yeah, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with there being no Avengers movie in Phase 4. Um, they're kind of starting anew with a lot of their new properties. And, uh, yeah, just, I, we're, we're kind of back to, I mean, we're, we're not back to square one, but we're, we're back to a point where they, you know, they're, they're, they're they 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 want to build up their universe again. And, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, a, I am perfectly fine with them taking their time to, build out this new MCU, you know, without, uh, without Captain America or Iron Man, build up this new MCU, and eventually get to an, uh, you know, a new Avengers movie, with a new set of Avengers, um, but yeah, interesting to note, uh, there was no talk about an Ant-Man 3, actually, uh, so that's actually very interesting, um, yeah, I, I kind of figured there'd be an Ant-Man 3, because, I mean, they've done at least three movies for all their characters thus far. But, uh, I mean, I guess that's okay. Like, I don't know, I mean, I guess you could say that, uh, that Ant-Man's, he, he had a, he had a pretty decent arc if you, if you take into account, you know, Ant-Man going all the way to Avengers Endgame. But, uh, yeah, I, like, yeah, I literally just, uh, I literally just noticed that they didn't say anything about an Ant-Man 3. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's very interesting. Um, yeah, but I think that's basically going to be it for this video. 
yeah, they, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I would say that I am, I'm cautiously optimistic about, uh, the MCU going forward. Um, like, honestly, like, Avengers Endgame was just such a perfect, like, just culmination and ending to the Infinity Saga, this, this series of films that they've been developing, um, I, I mean, that I've been watching, uh, since I was, like, eight years old, uh, when Iron Man came out. I don't know if I watched, I can't remember if I watched Iron Man. I definitely didn't watch it in theaters, but I can't remember when I first watched it. It might have been, might have been 2009. I'm not sure about it. Either way, ever since I was, like, a kid, I've been following these movies, and they've been telling this, they, they told this saga for ten years. Like, I grew up, uh, with this franchise, and I feel like they ended it just, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't want to say perfectly necessarily, but just perfectly in terms of leaving me satisfied, you know, I don't, I, like, I can't see myself being more satisfied with Endgame than I was, um, and yeah, like, after watching it, I, I, I just, I kind of left, uh, I, I left feeling like the MCU could end here, and I would be perfectly fine with that. And, you know, not to mention that, you know, obviously, Tony and Cap died. And, or, I mean, well, not died, but it seems like we're not going to get them anymore. Uh, or at least it seems like they're done with the MCU. So, and, you know, I mean, Cap and, Cap and Tony, um, Cap and Iron Man, they really were the, you know, the, the heart of the MCU. And uh, not having them there is definitely going to be... Uh, it's going to feel weird. And, uh, yeah, they, they, they were really the heartbeat of the MCU. Um, those were the two characters that I... Uh, that I was invested in the most. So, like, I hope... I, I hope that, uh, you know, that, can, that they can get me as invested in Shang-Chi as I am in, in Captain America... Um, yeah, I mean, and, you know, not to mention that, I have to say, like, while I, I've loved the Avengers movie thus, the, the Avengers movies thus far, I have not been all that crazy about the, the solo movies, uh, for the last few years, like, off the top of my head, I'm just thinking of, you know, like, Ant-Man and the Wasp, and, you know, movies like Captain Marvel, and, even just recently, Spider-Man Far From Home, like, I have not loved the solo movies, um, you know, as of, as of late, so I, I really hope that, like, I, I mean, really, at the end of the day, um, you know, in terms of, you know, decisions that they do with characters, and, you know, I don't, like, I don't really care about, you know, being accurate to the comic books or whatever, at the end of the day, I just, uh, I, I, I just want good movies, so, oh, at the end of the day, I'm just really hoping that these movies and TV shows are just great, and they get me, I, I just hope they can get me as invested in the MCU, this new MCU, uh, this new, new chapter for the MCU, I, I just hope that they can get me as invested as I was, uh, with the, with the Infinity Saga, so, yeah, I think that's going to be it for this video. Jesus Christ, this video is long. <laughs> um, but, I mean, we, we had a lot to talk about. Um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see what uh, what comes of this, this new chapter for the MCU. Uh, bye.